What's going on, you guys? Welcome to the Racy Podcast. This is your host, Christopher Zamora. Welcome to the show. So today, guys, I want to speak to you about this video game called Silent Hill 2. I'm talking about the newest one, the remake. There was one that came out back in like 2001 or 2002. I haven't never actually played those video games, but like the trailers that have given out for this video game... It just looks so goddamn good. Like, I'm excited to actually play this game. And I'm glad. I'm really glad that it's coming out on PC, on the Steam Deck. I will we'll be able to play it. There's, like, some games that come out, like, two years later into the Steam Deck. Like, probably the Spider-Man 2 game. I think it's going to come out on the Steam Deck maybe, like, a year from now or something like that. But anyways, Silent Hill 2, it seems so great. It's like a psychological horror type of video game. To be honest, um, I haven't really played uh, psychological horror type of games. Not as many. Like Probably the only one I can actually tell you about is The Evil Within. Have you guys ever played those two games? The Evil Within 1 and 2? Oh man, those games, they... Probably like the first one, it probably might have given me nightmares when I was young. I remember actually getting that video game for Christmas. Yeah, I remember actually uh, I told my mom I wanted to get this video game. Even though it's like it was like ready M for Mature, it just still got me it. Thank you, Mom. But yeah, The Evil Within, that game <laughs> is insane. It's about these three cops, right? They go into a hospital and they find out that this place is like deserted and like well like most of the people they have gotten killed in the hospital but they found like a doctor that doctor he was like unconscious and there was this other patient that was in there this patient he like injected something in the main characters and now they were like in this sort of different world and such that we don't know of and it kind of does remind me of like the matrix in a way but like more scarier basically silent hill this is like the og of psychological horror games like the evil within it was actually inspired by silent hill which i'm very surprised i have like i said i hadn't really played that many psychological horror games and this is probably going to be like my fourth one in the list. Silent Hill 2. I'm very interested in the storyline. And I'm glad that it's actually getting great reviews from all around. Like from good uh, reviewers. We have IGN, of course. And we also have Game Ranks. They actually like the video game. Like I saw the video, they did mention it was a pretty good game. I'm excited, man. I'm excited to actually really play it. And yeah, man, it's going to be an awesome experience. Hopefully, hopefully it is. And it doesn't require that much gigabytes to actually install it on the Steam Deck. Because, man, it takes a very long time to actually install the video game on the Steam Deck. If it's a game like it's 75 gigabytes or so, it probably might take you at least maybe like three hours or so. For the game to actually installed. Or maybe like 2 hours and 30 minutes. But yeah. Silent Hill 2. Let's see how that actually turns out man. I'm excited for it. I have been playing. Alien Isolation. Have you guys ever played that video game before? It does remind me of a lot of. The original movie of Alien. Like they did a. Wonderful job. With that video game. The graphics probably might not be as great, but like, just like the whole science fiction world and like how the doors open, like you're just looking at the the transmitter thing where you can actually look at the creatures following you, the robots, just like the whole world of Alien. They actually really catch it very well on the video game. And also, like, when you're in the vents as well, just crawling into them. It's just a wonderful experience. You could just play this with a friend and 
probably you guys could get scared of what's happening in the video game. It's like you're just trying to escape like the alien. Or like this alien, he just came out of nowhere. Or she just came out of nowhere. He just trying to survive it, you know? Pretty awesome game, in my opinion. I want to say one of my favorites, but it's very enjoyable. If you have never played it, go play it, man. You're going to have some fun playing that video game. And also, I want to speak to you about Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero. Now, that video game is actually going to come out, I think, on the same day that Silent Hill 2 is coming out. I'm actually going to wait for that one. Um, it's not that I'm, a, I'm not a fan of Dragon Ball Z. I'm just more excited for horror games, you know. We're already in October, and I'm excited just to to get into the horror video games. Maybe you might be thinking, Chris, why? <laughs> why you don't you just buy Dragon Ball Z Spark and Zero? Uh, I actually don't want to right now, but it does seem fun though. I seen the trailer and it seems like it could probably get like a ten out of ten, probably in IGN. I'll be surprised though. I'll be surprised if IGN actually <laughs> gives it like a seven or six. That would really suck because reviews actually do depend on how a game or a movie sells, especially in today's age. Have you guys have seen the reviews for the new movie of the Joker too? Yeah, it's not looking well for that movie all around. The critics and also the audiences, they did not score this movie good at all. Like, I think the critics, they gave it, like, a, I think, like, a 35%. And also, the the audience score, I think it was, like, a 37%, which is really bad on Rotten Tomatoes. It really does suck. But, like, I gotta admit, there are a few movies that I like. Well, mostly, like, comedy movies. They have a bad rating all around, like, for the critics and for the audience. Those movies, like how you say the tuxedo movie from jackie chan dude wars my car i think like those movies they have gotten bad ratings from both the critics and the audiences but like i do enjoy like those movies they're comedy movies though but like this one this is a drama i'm guessing just like action based drama and with musical now that's the thing that i did not really wasn't looking forward to for the joker 2 movie at the time of recording this podcast i still haven't seen the joker 2 movie but like when they announced that this movie was going to have musicals in it i was like very shocked and maybe like the people around the world as well they were like really shocked that the joker the joker the main villain that goes up against Batman was going to have a musical. Uh, to be honest, it didn't do so well in the reviews, but I haven't seen the movie yet, so I hadn't really, I cannot really give you my opinion on the movie. But yeah, that really does suck that it did get bad reviews all around. But it seemed like the trailer, it seemed so promising. Like it seemed like it was going to be a, a great movie. And like Lady Gaga, she plays as Harley Quinn. And of course, we have Joaquin Phoenix playing as the Joker. So yeah, I can't really give you much information for the Joker 2 movie. From my opinion, because I haven't seen the movie yet. But like the, the first Joker movie, I had to say, to me it was okay. It wasn't a great of a movie, but it was watchable. Like to be honest... The first movie I do gave it like a maybe like seven out of ten. Like it gives you like the story of Arthur and how he just be- became the Joker and just like him uh, going through this world and just trying to make a name of, of himself. To be honest, yeah, those were what the first Joker movie was all about. And they also made a billion dollars for the first movie, which is pretty dope. But now for this one, I saw like the budget, it was about like around 150 to 200 million dollars. Yeah, that is a lot of money 
But let's see if they can actually make that money back. Shit, they're going to have to double all of that money. You need to make at least $600 million profit or something like that. Let's see how it actually turns out, man. I haven't really seen it yet, but let's see. And also, Better BF versus Dimitri Bivol. I think that fight is going to happen, I think, um, this week. Well, for you guys, you're listening to this podcast on a Tuesday. So, yes, it is for this week for y'all. This Saturday, Dimitri Bivol and Better BF are going to fight each other. And I'm excited, dude. Better BF, he just destroys anybody that gets on his way. He has KO'd every single person that has gone in his way. And could he actually take down Dimitri Bivol? The guy who actually um, defeated Canelo? I believe so, man. Better be if might be older, but he just got those power punches, dude. Dimitri Bivol, he's a very technical fighter. And I don't know. He's, both of them are undefeated fighters. But we will see, man. This fight is going to be a good one. I believe so. To me, in my opinion, Better BF is going to get a KO. Or maybe a TKO win against Dimitri Bivol. Maybe around round 10 or 11 or so. Yeah, like around the later rounds, I believe so. That's going to happen. We're going to see, man. Better BF. <laughs> Hopefully, he better wins. <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> but yeah. Better BF versus Dimitri Bivol. Hopefully, it's a good one. And I also saw that Alex Pereira, he is actually going to fight tonight on Saturday. By the time you're listening to this podcast, you will already know who won. I'm not really sure the the guy that he's fighting, but like Alex Pereira is fighting. That's very huge for the UFC. He's like probably maybe the top three guys right now in the UFC. We got we got Alex Pereira. We got Elio Tuporia and maybe Marab now because he defeated Sean O'Malley for the title. These three guys, they're like the top three guys in the UFC at the moment. And probably you could, you could put their uh, Sean O'Malley for number four. Yes, he did lose against Marab, but he's still one of the main guys from the UFC as of this moment. Yeah, I I think so. These four guys are the main guys for the UFC. But yeah, Alex Pereira, he's going to fight. And hopefully gets a KO. <laughs> hopefully gets a KO win against his opponent. But maybe he doesn't. And we're just going to get shocked that the yellow guy is going to do so well. I heard that the guy that he's facing, he's like good. Like just being uh, fighting on the ground. And like Alex Pereira, to be honest... He's mostly known as a kickboxer. He's not really good on the ground. So maybe, maybe he can, the other guy can get a submission win against Alex Pereira. We don't know, man. We don't know. This, this sport of USC is like very hard to pre- predict sometimes. But I am excited to actually see this fight. So yeah, we'll see who's going to win it. Who wants it more to be the champion. And yeah, guys, that is it for this podcast. Hey, thank you so much for listening. If you guys did made it this far, make sure to actually follow this podcast on whichever platform you are listening to it. If you are listening to it on Spotify, YouTube, Pandora, make sure to follow it. And also recommend this podcast to a friend or neighbor that actually likes listening to stuff about horror stuff, combat sports, and pop culture things. Maybe they will enjoy this podcast as much as you do. And yeah, guys, that is it for this podcast. Again, thank you so much for listening. Take care and live to the fullest. Bye.